Hi friends. My name is Katie. This is Life Between Words. I'm nervous about doing this video because I've never done a sit down chatty video like this. I was super inspired by Kayla from Books and Lala and Bree from Bree Hill who've done a decade in review video like this. I want to try my hand. Let's see how it goes. I love the idea of this decade interview, like looking at your life and looking at the books that you've read and how those books have shaped or maybe the way your life has informed your reading habits over the course of 10 years. Because 10 years is a long time in a life. A lot happens in a decade, especially for me between my 20s and my 30s, like, a lot of life happens. I am now in the trenches of my 30s and I finally sort of feel like I'm an adult, whereas, you know, 10 years ago, I still felt kind of like a kid. Now, that doesn't mean that like there aren't moments where I'm like, who decided that I was responsible enough to care for three small human beings? I don't, I'm not good at this adulting thing. When can I pass off this responsibility to someone else? I can't, I can't. I am fully an adult and that's the way it is. But for the most part, I feel like an adult now. Anyway, let's take a look back at 2010, Katie. In 2010, I was living in LA. I was getting my graduate degree from USC. I was getting a master's in communication management. I, like I said, I was living in LA. I wasn't doing a whole lot of reading, but I did read some books that have left a lasting impression on me. And I wanna say this, in 2010, I didn't know there was a book community online. There were booktube channels in 2010. Goodreads existed in 2010. I wasn't aware of either of those places. Most of the book recommendations that I got were from my friends and my family. In particular, the book recommendations that I trusted the most were from my friend Hillary, who I was in grad school with. She recommended to me The Pillars of the Earth and Eat, Pray, Love. Both of these books were books I loved in 2010. Pillars of the Earth because this was her favorite book. It's become one of my favorite books. I've never reread it, but I remember I was reading this at a time when I should have been working on my thesis, and instead of doing that, I read this book. And Eat, Pray, Love because it was just a really fun read. I know this is like a hated or love it book. I kind of fall in the camp of loving this book. The movie came out when I was living in LA and I got to go see like a early reaction movie of it and it was really fun. And so I, I loved it. 2010 was also the middle of a recession. And so when I graduated from grad school, I had a hard time finding a job. Not only that, but I also felt a little bit like a country bumpkin living in the big city. And I just wasn't sure that LA was culturally where I fit in. That's not anything against LA. I loved my experience living in LA, but um, I did feel a little bit like a misfit. So I moved home because I was jobless and I needed a place to live. And I had a massive amount of debt because USC is really, really expensive. I moved back across the country. My mom and I had an amazing road trip and I got a job at Barnes & Noble, where I met my future husband. Moving into 2011, I started dating my husband in the spring. My favorite thing working at Barnes & Noble was reading books in the children's section. I would just peruse the shelves and start pulling books off the shelf and reading them. I actually got in trouble one time because I was reading a book while I should have been working. My thinking at the time was, hey, I work at a bookstore. I need to be able to recommend children's books when they come to the children's section. Let me just pick a book off the shelf and read it. And um, yeah, I got in trouble. Because I loved working in the children's department and because I was surrounded by books, I was getting a ton of recommendations and I also discovered my love of middle grade as an adult. I discovered such middle grade loves as Savvy. This was one of my favorite reads that I discovered just perusing the shelves at Barnes & Noble. I also discovered my love of food memoirs in 2011. My first introduction was Ruth Reichel, Tender at the Bone, Come for Meat with Apples, Garlic and Sapphire. A few others that I ended up loving over the years are Home Cooking, A Homemade Life by Molly Weisenberg. She's the creator of the blog Ornjet, and The Sharper Your Knife, The Less You Cry. Because my future husband was also working at Barnes & Noble and we were getting to know each other, and one of the things you do when you get to know someone else who loves reading is you talk about your favorite books. We exchanged some favorite books, and the book he gave me to read was Girls by Frederick Bush. This is his favorite book of all time. I have never heard anyone ever talk about this book. He read it in college and he handed it to me and told me to read it. So I did. And you know what I did with his favorite book? I dropped it in a puddle and ruined it and then had to give it back to him. I was so ashamed. Luckily he didn't dump me and in 2012 he asked me to marry him. So in 2012 my husband asked me to marry him. We were engaged. I got a full-time job somewhere other than Barnes and Noble and in the fall we got married. In 2012, I don't remember reading a whole lot. 
I was doing a lot of rereads because that is what the majority of my reading life looked like. Rereads of old favorites. I reread Harry Potter all the time. I reread Jane Austen. I reread Anne of Green Gables. I mean, that is what I was doing before I was introduced to this huge bookish world that existed outside of personal recommendations. 2013 was a big year. Personally, I got pregnant. I got a pixie cut, which may not seem like a big deal, but I loved that pixie cut and would love to do it again. In terms of my reading life, it was also a big year. 2013 was the year I discovered Goodreads and I started tracking my reading. I read 18 books in 2013, which isn't a lot compared to what I read today, but was probably on the upper end of what I read back then. I can look back at exactly what those books were because honestly, I don't remember what I was reading in 2010, 11, and 12. Like, I remember some books, but not a lot of titles come back to me because I wasn't recording all the books that I read. I think one of the reasons I read so few books was because I was still going through those hills and valleys of reading. One of the books that I read in 2013 was Les Mis, and I didn't like it very much. I feel weird saying that because it is such a beloved classic, but I'm of the opinion that Sir Victor Hugo could have used an editor and chopped about mm, 100 or 200 pages off. I would reread Les Mis if I read the abridged version. Is that sacrilege? I think so, but I'm just saying it anyway. Putting it out there into the world, Les Mis was too long. I love the musical. I had wanted to read Les Mis since seeing the production of it in London. <sighs> the book didn't work as well for me. Did I already mention that in 2013 I got pregnant and my husband and I went on a belated honeymoon to Hawaii, which was amazing, and I probably read more during our vacation to Kauai than I did at any other point during the year. I read books like Moon Over Manifest, which I probably read in about a day, and I also read Beautiful Ruins. This is a middle grade, this is an adult sort of contemporary slash historical fiction novel. I loved both of these books, and when we left Kauai, I didn't have anything to read, and at the time, Kauai didn't have any bookstores. I couldn't find a one and I needed something to read on the plane ride home. So we stopped at a Walmart and they had like one shelf of books and one of the books on the shelf was Gone Girl. And I'm loath to even mention it because I didn't like Gone Girl. Don't hate me, love me, please. I'm so afraid to say that I didn't like Gone Girl because that's like the thriller darling of the world. Everyone in my life had read it and I hadn't read it and so I picked it up. Was it compulsive reading? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes, right up until the end. And I really didn't like the end of Gone Girl and so I no longer have a copy of it, but such is life. In 2014, I had my baby. My reading life in 2014 was defined by the fact that I was a new parent. I read 32 books. And so while I read more books in 2014, twice as many books in 2014 as I did in 2013, the books that have left the biggest impression on me are the parenting books that I read. I read the Read Aloud Handbook. And my parenting philosophy was solidified in terms of knowing that I wanted and desired a life of reading aloud to my kids. And then the other book that I read that was so so influential was Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child. It has been a resource that I've gone back to again and again and again, but the first time I read it was in 2014. So yeah, that was basically 2014. I became a mom and <laughs> I read parenting books. That's like all I remember from 2014. It's a little bit of a blur. In 2015, my mind was blown again as I discovered a larger book community online. I found the Modern Mrs. Darcy and my TBR exploded because of the Modern Mrs. Darcy. I read all of Kate Morton's books in 2015, The Distant Hours, The House at Riverton, The Secret Keeper, The Forgotten Garden, and I loved them. I also read Me Before You because of the modern Mrs. Darcy, and I really, really didn't like it. Oh my gosh, another really unpopular opinion. I can't believe I'm revealing all of this all in one video, but there you go. And then through the modern Mrs. Darcy, I think I went down some sort of rabbit trail and I found BookTube. When I found BookTube, I didn't find one of the really big booktubers. Her channel used to be called Words of a Reader, and now it's called Leslie Rickman. It was only after I discovered her channel that I discovered all the really big booktubers, and I became obsessed. Because of BookTube, I was reading and loving books like An Ember in the Ashes, The Martian, Fangirl, and The Shadow of the Wind, which became an all-time favorite. And by the end of 2015, the amount of books that I read Read had doubled again. I read 68 books in 2015. That blows my mind. I don't think I knew before then that it was possible for me to read 
that many books. And I did all that in 2015 on top of being a fairly new mom and moving into our first house. At the beginning of 2016, I had a miscarriage and I went into the depths of despair, as Anne of Green Gables says, not to make light of that situation. It was one of the worst times in my life and I was looking for outlets. I made a booktube channel and I was really awkward and I was really scared and I did it anyway. Because I started a booktube channel in 2016, I also decided to do a read-along of one of my childhood favorites, which was A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I still have all the tabs from that reread, and the book discussion video that I did for that read-along is one of my most viewed videos on this channel. I still get comments on it every once in a while, which is so funny to me. And the year ended on a happy note because I did get pregnant again, and in January of 2017, I had my second baby. So now I had Little Fox and Little Wilder. I knew I wasn't going to read as much and I didn't. So in 2017, I read 52 books, which is still a heck of a lot more than I was reading before 2016. I think part of that can be attributed to the fact that especially when Wilder was first born. When he was three weeks old, he spent a week in the hospital with RSV, which was really traumatizing for us. So interestingly, that year, as I look back at what my reading life looked like and what books I was reading, and th I think because I was seeking comfort in this transition, I reread a lot of favorite books. I reread Pride and Prejudice. I reread Anne of Green Gables. I reread Peace Like a River, and things were good. I also got to meet some of my favorite booktube friends in real life. We went to Chicago. I started a few new bookish projects. I decided at the beginning of 2018 to start a books only Instagram account, which I have loved in the past couple years. It's been a huge source of joy for me. Molly from Molly Reads and I decided to start a bookish podcast, which is currently on hiatus, but it has been such a fun thing for us to do together. It's called No Thanks We're Booked. It's really great. And because of No Thanks We're Booked, we got to interview some really cool authors and read some great books along the way. We read Ghosted and we interviewed Rosie Walsh. We read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing and interviewed Hank Green, which was incredible. Krista from Books and Jams and I also started Middle Grade March in 2018 and I rediscovered again my love for Middle Grade. I read Middle Grade books that have become all-time favorites of mine, like The Girl Who Drank the Moon and Echo. It was an incredible month of reading and I'm so glad that that has continued. So let's talk about 2019. 2019 was another year of transition for me. It also was a year defined by death. At the beginning of 2019, my father-in-law died, which was so hard for my husband and for me. And then this past summer, my grandmother died. And in the middle of that, I got pregnant with my third baby. So the year ended in joy because in November, I gave birth to little Marigold Ellen, who has swiftly brought so much sunshine into our life. But it was a really hard year. I also decided, because why not add more chaos, to start my booktube channel again. So here I am. And booktube has changed a lot in like the year and a half that I was gone. In 2019, I read 71 books, which is the most number of books that I've read yet. Although. I didn't read as many pages. My year of reading in 2019 was defined by things like reading all of Betsy Tacey and discovering new favorites like This Tender Land and Bear Town, which I can't find my copy of right now. And I read more amazing middle grade novels in 2019's middle grade March. Sweep, The War That Saved My Life, and Louisiana's Way Home by Kate DiCamillo, who's one of my favorite authors. So 2019 brought a lot of change again, and I'm really excited to see how the next decade goes and what my reading life looks like. I don't know what the point of this is. I don't know if there's some sort of overarching theme, and I don't know that I really need to tie it all together. But I will say that it was really fun to look at the last decade and think about how my life has changed and think about how my reading has changed. Do I read different books now than I did at the beginning of the decade? Not really. But I'm reading a lot more books than I read at the beginning of the decade and I'm enjoying my reading life a lot more because I feel like my reading life is a lot richer. The experiences, the gifts that reading has brought me, the gift of finding community online of other readers, that has been invaluable. So yeah, I'm not reading hugely different, but my reading life has changed a lot because of booktube, because of Instagram, because of just my online reading life, and I'm so, so, grateful. I hope you guys liked looking back at my decade of reading and my decade of life. I don't know how to wrap this video up. It's not going to be like Kayla's video. She's got some editing skills and I'm piddling around on iMovie. I'll talk to you later friends in another video soon. Cheers!
gosh, did you put that together yourself? <gasps> That's amazing! Give me a high five! Do you want to show the camera? Look what Fox just made. A, <gasps> a real tarantula made out of Legos. It's so cool! I'm so proud that you did this all by yourself! <laughs> Go show Daddy! He's going to love it!